And we are live. Are we live? We're yeah. live. Yeah. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, welcome to our... Uh, I mean, I welcome okay. to our, our musical... Uh, uh, what do we call this? A musical... Musical Q&A, musical I Q&A. believe. Q&A. And oh, which means we're going to need to pull up the chat. Yeah, we'll bring up the chat. Oh. And uh, oh, I'll, I'll pull up the chat. Uh, unless you, you do pull up the chat there, or... I can. I can pull it up here. Every answer has to be sung. Yes, yes. every answer has to be sung. And um, I'm... Nope. We're, oh. There, there, we very nice. there it is. We, so we're here, and let us introduce you to sam haft our amazing composer songwriter extraordinaire and uh sam take it away introduce everyone hi everybody uh i'm sam haft uh i do much of the music for this show uh among others and uh i am so pleased to be here i'm so pleased you have tuned in uh to my right is the inimitable the legendary richard horvitz voice of moxie to my left is the queen of the damned, Vivian Medrano, creator of, you know who she is, you're on her channel right now. Uh, on the stream, we have the illustrious Christina V, uh, the voice of Verasica, the greatest pop star in the history of hell. And of course, we have the goetic prince, the horniest owl in all the land. <laughs> Bryce Pinkham, uh, who plays Solus. Yay, Bryce! <laughs> so talk to us, Sam. What? Tell us about. <laughs> tell us about. Tell us about um, everyone's favorite lullaby song. Oh. Uh, featuring our friend Bryce. Yes. Uh, so I talked about this a little bit in a previous stream and a little bit in the one this morning. Um, as, as I've mentioned before, you know, it was a very personal song to me. Uh, I have now a, a three-year-old, but he was uh, not quite one when I wrote the song, which it, it's unbelievable That's how long say. ago it's oh been. Yeah. Uh, uh, or maybe he was not quite two. I think he was one. I think he was one. It was, I wrote the song in December of 2020. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. Um, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's blowing my mind. Anyway, yeah. uh, I, uh, as a parent happen to love my song, my, love my son kind of a lot. Um, and uh, so the, the song was really, you know, it was, uh, because in, in its description, you know, it was outlined as like a parent's love letter to their child of like really wanting them to be safe and comfortable and just like trying to reassure a child that everything's going to be all right no matter what and that was how it was outlined to me from Vivian um and then you know obviously then it was going to be interrupted by the contrast of the failing marriage and the family falling apart and uh I just really I I felt so personally this idea of like looking at my baby son and saying, you know, oh my God, there is nothing I wouldn't do to make sure that everything turns out okay for you. Um, and so, you know, it really was an example of taking such a simple concept and such a simple phrase, like you will be okay. Um, and, and injecting as much emotion and sentiment and love into that as possible and obviously the song was incredibly well received and incredibly well performed sir yeah <laughs> thank so, you yeah, I, I remember the, the day we recorded that and you said well do you just want to hear it once through and bryce said no i want to try it. let's try it right away yeah and the very first take mm -hmm. very first take was like we were all whoa who is this guy? He should be on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> as as with happens with uh, as this happens with Bryce, I think a lot is that we will get you in for a song and we'll say like, hey, do you want to just you know you want to hear it? Do you want to play with it? Do you want to just take it chunk by chunk? And then you'll just do it start to finish. And always, always. Uh, I mean, everything we have come from you in all the things that you've sung. So, so much of it comes from like your first three takes. I mean, really, yeah. you just nail it immediately. You just, you're ready. <laughs> yeah. It's funny what, um, um, I'm in a rehearsal process right now. And uh, I was told the other day that 
my first and second and third instincts are often the best ones, you know? And I think that's true for, for performing as well. Like I, I, I don't know about you, Richard, but I sort of try to come in with my preparation to a level that I could sort of say, all right, well, I'm going to give it my best stab. And I like, I like doing that. I mean, I'm glad I chose to do that on that, on, on those songs because I do think sometimes your first take, it's like in theater, we talk about your first audition or your, your, your first audition is your best. And then the callback is not as good. And then yeah, your yeah. entire rehearsal process, you're just trying to get back to your first audition. Uh, it's a little bit the same with, um, with singing sometimes. So yeah, I love that first take um, in the same way. I love a first preview of a show because there's never been an audience before. And so it's this electric feeling. So um, at the same time, I love that we get to do it multiple times because there's always yeah. something, there's always something as a singer you want to, you know, do a little differently or, 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 or you know, tweak a little bit. So um, I feel like we do tease out some really great moments that, and that, that all, uh, you know, get used. And uh, it's always so fun. I mean, with you two, Christina doing these songs, because, it is, it, this is maybe not apparent to one of the viewers of the show, but like so often with the music, we know what we're gonna use the moment it happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. there will be a, a line that is sung a certain way and everyone collectively will go, ooh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, that one, that one, uh-huh. And like, it's, it's so, it can be, it's certainly in the business of animation where like things from the from the point at which you're performing them to get to see them, it can take many, many months of, of yeah. production. It's the great thing about doing the music for this is uh, is like it's there's an instant gratification there where like we know like nope, we got we got the song. Yeah, and that, it's we get, there. We get it in the can right away. Yeah. So we know we have it. And mm -hmm. then Sam, you're so great with coming up with little uh, intricacies like, hey, what if we did, you know, Maybe we do more of a, uh, you know, let's do a little bit of a riff here or something. Let's try that. And people like both Christina and, and Bryce are really good at just in the moment doing that. And they go, oh, we, that, that was it. Yeah. And we'll often, like, take that instead of, like, some of the other stuff that we have that's really nice. Yeah. Really. But they're... Their ability to improvise in those moments. And by the way, yours too. Well, no, because I'm looking at Bryce, and I was so honored that Bryce said, "I don't know, if this is how you how you approach it, Richard." But <laughs> you know, I am like in such awe of Bryce's voice and Christina's voice. They have like smooth, dulcet, beautiful tones, <laughs> and I got Abby Feierstein voice, you know. So, but um. At least I can do it in tune most of the time. But yeah, I agree with Bryce. I think that um, I don't, I like to be prepared. I, I just was, like to be prepared. I was just singing in the car. I want to make sweet, <laughs> gentle love to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love, love it so much. <laughs> I want to make gentle love to you. <laughs> right? But, um, but yeah, I'm I'm with Bryce and probably Christina too because I know Christina is always comes in prepared also, and if there's a part that that like I remember we were recording um, the Osmodius song with Christina, and um, she said I'm not sure about this part, and then we played it for her once, and she went Oh yeah, and she got it. Like, do you remember that, Christina? You're like, yeah. boom, yeah. got it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like I was saying, I agree with Bryce. I like to be prepared. Uh, I think the thing with the callback thing that Bryce was talking about is I I equate it to um, a table read. Mm. And you're reading it for the first time and you get the laugh on that first line. And then you never get it again. And then it's like run through if it's a sitcom or say, yeah, we're cutting that line. What do you mean? Yeah. It's because you know it's the funny line. And then it was like great the first time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then actors yeah. get it in their head. Uh, and so I want to be prepared when I go in to sing with the likes of a Bryce or a Christina. Well, and, and I should add about Richard that like, you know, once I get everyone's audio for the for the stuff that I'm working on, um, you know, the first thing I do is like I lay it out in like pitch software, like I see where everyone's at. Often it's just kind of close enough because everyone's so talented that I don't really have to do much to it. 
you are dead on. <laughs> you, your pitch is uncanny. Uh, you are. De- I, 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 I said this when we recorded uh, a duet that you guys will hear in a future <clears throat> season. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I can say truly, it. like <laughs> nothing was even tweaked. I mean, it was like the raw take was like exactly what. We got. Wow, I'm I'm flattered. I, if you had heard me practicing over and over at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you would think, "Whoa, what's pitch?" He's never m- met it. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was actually so I'm trying to keep an eye on uh, various questions. Um, is it possible to also get like a, a readout or like an iPad that has the yeah. chat or something? Um, just c- just because I'm sort of multitasking here a little bit, there was a really interesting question that someone asked that has nothing to do with the music. But, it, but I want to ask it for someone because I'm also now really curious. Okay. That's the best kind of question. We're like, I don't know the answer, and now I want you to tell me. Uh-huh. Um, it's, are the, would various members of the Hell of a Boss cast be aware of the existence of Charlie's Hotel? That's a good question. Um, aware, yes. Okay. But to avoid, you know, any potential future, any whatever. yeah. yeah. I don't know past that, but aware, yeah. Aware. I like I, I like <laughs> knowing that. Oh, oh perfect, perfect. Do you want it or do you want me to hold it? Um, I'll jump in while they um, while they figure this out because yeah. I wanted to say something about what Richard said. I, I imagine there might be some viewers who, um, you know, think, well, I don't have a singer's voice, you know, and um, or like I don't have a voice like fill in the blank, and. I have that feeling. I feel that about my voice. And I think what what I've learned is that we all have a voice that's unique to us and we all can sing. And like that, yeah. if your voice doesn't sound like someone else, that's actually a good thing. You know, yeah. R- Richard has an amazing voice because he sounds like no one else. And, and oh, Christina man. as well. Like w- we don't sound like other people. We sound like us. And so if you're out there like, oh gosh, I don't sound like these singers. That's a good thing. You sound like you. And oh, yeah. um, that Thanks. doesn't mean you can't sing. Um, and that doesn't mean you shouldn't sing. Uh, and, well, and don't be fooled, you know, learning to sing professionally took a long time. It took me a long time to learn how to sing. So if you're, um, if you're, uh, you know, uh, early in your pursuit of the, of the musical arts. Um, and I'm sure Sam, Sam would have something to say on this too. Like it just takes time. It's not something you just learn how to do overnight. So, um, I just want to put that out there for anyone who's listening and going, Oh gosh, yeah, I don't sound like those people. And on that note, actually, someone asked a question, and uh, and uh, looks like they paid ten pounds to ask this question. They were asking it uh, for you specifically, Bryce, which okay. was about um, your beginnings as an actor that took you from you know the start of your career to Stolas. And in fact, on that note, uh, Vivienne was just telling us this really interesting story about how you came to be approached for the role, which you could, I mean, also repeat for these kind of people. <laughs> yes, this one. Yes, that's oh, the, there, that was the question. Is. This is from James M. Well, I don't know um, which you want to start. Oh yeah, I'll let Bryce start for yeah. sure. Sure, I guess. Uh, I guess the question was about how did some choices in acting and what I chose to do in my career lead me to Stolas, and um, you know, I think most actors will tell you they don't know. Um, th- th- <laughs> things just sort of you walk through doors when they open, um, and the, the choices I've made have been sort of like what's been available to me. And I know that I want to work doing performance, creative performance. And so I found myself uh, leaving acting school and um, wanting a job. And the first job that I got in New York was in a musical. So I kind of, um, <laughs> I'd done musicals as a kid, but I, I kind of said, oh, maybe, maybe this is where I can, can uh, make a living. And, uh, and so I started to kind of work more and more on my singing voice. And, um, and I think uh, Viv can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that, uh, performances on Broadway singing probably led, um, led Viv to, to think of me as somebody who might be uh, possible for this role. And, and I think when I saw the character description, one of the descriptions was like a character that I had done. So I was like, well, at least I got half of this, <laughs> this description. Um, that's a good segue into that yeah. story. Yeah, that was, that was where I was. 
I was telling them was that, um, you know, I casting for the show was kind of the first time that I was casting, you know, an actual, you know, because even the pilot was, was it, it was the first time working like with SAG and with, with like SAG actors and stuff, but like casting for season one of, of Hell of a was the first time I was ever casting, like authentically, because I kind of had my cast pretty picked out for the pilot. Um, and, um, and, and, and I had, you know, people who could connect me with the right people. And um, so, uh, so when it was casting time for the series, it was a whole new world of like getting everyone, you know, getting reads and, and hearing all these different takes on characters. And for Stolas, I had already kind of had a, a, an idea in my head and like I, I find a lot of my character, or I, I find a lot of inspiration through music. So a lot of like the voices or the voice types that I would like for characters are through music I listen to. And, um, and so I, I was familiar with your performance in Gentleman's Guide. And uh, there was a song from it that really gave me the feel for, for Stolas. And so it was one of the audition songs. And, um, and then it, was, it occurred to me, because I, you know, I would listen, I, 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 I was in a conversation with the casting director, and I was like, I wonder if this actor or the singer like is is in, might be interested. Is he as like this person, yeah. like like because I was like, oh, you know, something like that. Uh, could you try? Could you see if if, if this actor is interested? Yeah. And maybe? don't send him. And and I did, and yeah, and then when they did make contact, I mentioned I was like, well, you probably don't need to send that song. I already know this person <laughs> can sing. Yeah. And and they did anyway. <laughs> and so because when you when you send in your read, it was it, it made me laugh so hard. It, you you were like. Well, I'm probably not going to sound as good as the person that is recording. <laughs> yeah, I made a joke like, out of it. That's right. <laughs> and I, and it was it was very cool. But like, yeah, obviously, um, you were you were very destined to be this character. And um, but that was that was I had told them specifically. I was like, that might be, like you don't need to send that. Like I know that this actor can sing this song, but like, they did it anyway. And it was it was uh, it was very nice to to get that. Like I heard that joke and I went. Okay, I think this is also like comedically a good fit for this show because yeah. that's definitely the attitude. Yeah, of this yeah. Show. yeah. There was an interesting question that I think I may have made a lore realization about. So, I, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but someone someone was asking about Verasica of saying, "Oh, well, was Verasica a pop star when she was alive?" But correct me if I'm wrong, is Verasica just kind of born in hell? Yes, Verasica is a succubus, so she was not a I'll say. But if there was a living pop star, which one would she be, Christina? A living, wait, oh my gosh. That is, uh... <laughs> oh man, it would have to be like somebody like Kesha with like party music. It's kind of like, that's, that's, it's about having a good time. I'm going to say, I'm going to say somebody like Kesha it would be pretty sweet. So here's Christina Aguilera too. She's got <laughs> a lot of that. Oh, you have like the hair for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, this is a really interesting question you, for you, Viv. Uh, do you want this, by the way? Oh, you know, I, I okay. can. You're you, good. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> a question for you was, uh, what Hell of a Boss character has not gotten a song that you would really like to give a song? Oh man, um, well season two has a, a bunch of songs from characters that who have not sung yet, so there are some. But I, just in general, um, I really would love to give Vivian Nixon more songs. Oh yes, yes. Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean all the characters though, like there's there's so many different kinds of songs, and and obviously we can't I can't say too much about season two, but in season, season two, season two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, we're working on it right now, and we're getting all the songs like comped and, and prepared for them. And there's some really cool genres that we take the characters through. Um, and I know Bryce, you sang one for Stolas that's very outside of like the normal sound for Stolas. Yeah. And I'm super yeah, excited me. for everyone to hear. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that one, I'm very excited for everyone to hear some of like the kind of. You know, there's some diversifying musical styles as well. Absolutely. Um, there, um, there are a lot of people also asking uh, a question, which we all get a lot, which is about um, a soundtrack coming out. And, like, the answer is yes. Like, we're just crotting, crossing the T's and dotting the I's on the legal for that. Yeah. But, like, absolutely, the plan is to get a soundtrack yeah. out with, you know, like, full versions of the songs sung by the characters. So oh, that'd be dope. We, we, we want you to have all that. Yes. <laughs> It is definitely, it's in progress. Yeah. Um, oh, here's a, it's actually speaking of, someone said Luna song. 
Yes, oh, that's that, a good that, yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. you know what? Actually, because she hasn't done any yet, mm-hmm. so yeah, we yeah, that's a good one. Absolutely, would love to 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 have Erica saying Lou, something. She did the the original of the pilot, but that's be. Which, yes, yeah, but she, she did do the pilot. She sang yeah. um, when she played Millie in the pilot. Yeah, mm, exactly. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that would be super fun to yes. do. A, a just like a punk song. Oh yeah, oh, that'd a be punk great. Song that would be great. <laughs> that'd be great. Um, uh, so I got uh, a question about uh, creating the melody of a song. How do I do that? Um, and that is uh, that's a. Uh, I, I there are I would say there are songwriters that are of two schools. There are melody first songwriters, and then there are structure first songwriters. I am boring. I'm a structure first songwriter. I always start with what is the mood of this song, build that instrumentally, build together a chord progression or a vamp that really communicates the mood and the emotion of the scene. And from there, then I figure out the top line melody. Whereas there are other people who... Paul McCartney is a medley, med, med, melody guy first. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like the melody comes like a bolt from the heavens yes. and it's like, <laughs> I, I, have yeah. seen, I have seen something from beyond the veil. Yeah, that, and that, I, yeah. I am not. I, I stack together Legos until the melody becomes obvious. Yeah, and that's, that's actually your voice. There's, there's a signature Sam Aft sound. We always know it's a Sam song. Oh, yeah. I'm song, changing song. my answer to my. Okay, who yes. are you? Who are you? Doja Cat. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. That's yeah. Doja Cat is is real life Verasica. Mm-hmm. I totally. Yes. That is absolutely correct. Vivian, who's Doja Cat? <laughs> Doja Cat. Very is... popular right I now. Oh, yeah, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, well, this is, you'll get an interesting answer, answer to this. Um, uh, the, we would like him to be. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone asked, um, can Weird Al be in Hell of a Boss as a main character? Um, we very, pub- <laughs> we very publicly would like him to be. Yeah. Very much. Mu- Weird oh. Al, if you are watching this. If you're watching <laughs> this. Come on. Watching you be- <laughs> If you're watching this specific stream, yes. Um, here's a question. Let me let me read it first. Let's see. Oh, um, so so Richard, Bryce, and Christina, what are some funny outtakes you had on set? Also, thanks again for the autographs from last year, especially the uh, BD message from uh, Bryce and, or Bryce has stole us. So this is from. Mm. Uh, I cannot say your username. I'm so sorry. It is a lot of letters. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Akira Ryuzen, twenty ten. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Christina, you first. What, do you remember any funny outtake stuff? Oh, man. I don't know if I remember any funny outtakes, but I feel like the lyrics themselves would be yes. what an outtake would be. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Bryce? Yeah, I don't, I mean, I certainly remember just the feeling of like cracking ourselves up in the booth. And, yeah. Oh, and yeah. sometimes that being from a word said wrong or a different word said or a, you know, we didn't I'm expect sure to note. come out of your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or spots where we'd be, um, you know, where you'd give us permission to improvise a little bit. Um, and, you know, that just to me, when we're making ourselves laugh, that feels like the sweet spot of of creativity and where where the best and worst ideas come from and sifting through the best and worst ideas is somebody else's job but the artist's job at least in 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 this setting to me feels like to just generate from that place um of like can you make yourself laugh and can you make the people on the other end of the line laugh and if you can do that then just keep just stay right in that pocket as long as you can i mean i've heard richard talk about this before that sort of sense of play yeah, that's we were just we were just saying that this morning that wet that we're we're enjoying each other's company, we're making each other laugh, and we don't know what you know the audience is gonna think about it, but in that moment, it's always been my belief that if we're having fun, you're going to have fun. And and that's why I think the sense of play and fun that Bryce was just talking about is very important. Um, for me, I have a lot of outtake stuff because I get to work, you know, I get to direct myself and Viv gets to direct me and stuff. But 
Um, I think the I think it, it's a song that isn't out yet. It's uh, yeah. it's a duet that I have with I can say Millie right? Yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. I have so a duet. shocking. Yeah, <laughs> I have a duet with Millie, and we didn't we didn't get to record together. And there's like some really strong harmony in there, mm-hmm. and so um, we never got to hear each other recording at the same time. And then when you played it the first time, you take it, Sam. Yeah. Um. It. Yeah. They just like did not line up. <laughs> we did um, our like not did even not even come close. Melodically, the harmonies lined up. Timing wise, <laughs> they it was just very very different. Um, and then also like this was a song that because it was in the midst of the songwriting process for the other show, um, I I was not able to be around for either sessions of this one. And normally I'm always around to kind of like police the melody and the timing and the performance and the stuff with it. But like, I just wasn't there for these. And then I got these and I lined them up and I went, oh no, these are two different songs. But... But we re-recorded Richard, and uh, it just, it, it, how it sounds now is delightful. I mean, also, like, were I there in Vivian's session, then I probably would have even changed the key of the song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. there's a note there that is really, really low for her. Yeah. Um, yes. And, oh, hello, Kat. Uh, that oh, Richard, she, this is Doja Cat, by the way. Oh, oh, don't you cat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there is a note that Vivian performs, and it and it's like it, you can see it's just like such. It's like, uh, yeah, like it's down it, there. It so well. And were we recording that on the day, I would have said, "Oh, don't worry about it. I'll mess with the key of the song, and we'll come yeah, back we'll to come, it like yeah. you know, a couple semitones higher." Mm. But. Keeping it that way, it was like this happy little accident yeah. where picturing Millie singing the note like that was <laughs> so in character and funny. And it was like totally Millie's enthusiasm mm-hmm. of like, I don't care what this note is. I'm going to sing it. That's like right. and it was, it just did a becomes. a good job with it, even though yeah. she was like, this is not my case. It's this beautifully <laughs> in character yeah, moment just... that, <laughs> that, that like, just... when you hear it, you're going to see like, oh yeah, this is such a funny, genuine Millie moment mm-hmm. of like, no, I'm playing game with you. I'll meet you in your key, Moxie. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. it's just like, it ended up being this beautiful, hilarious accident that like, mm-hmm. you know, one of those things that happens in the booth. I mean, my favorite of all the improvisational things that happened um, happened with Michael Romeo Ruocco or yes. Rocco. Ro- Ro- yes. Yeah. yes. Um, and he was the voice of dramatic Blitzo, as we yes. called him in yes. the in the, the Moxie's the Bad Trip the, the sequence, trip. the Phantom of the Opera style character. Yeah. 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 And initially, in the sort of spoken intro, the shtick <laughs> is that yes, fancy that. fancy Blitz is getting is getting Moxie's Moxie's name wrong over and over and over again. It's calling Moxiferous. Moxiferous Rex III. Hey, that's not my name. Yeah, and and just that was like the first clue that things were off. But we were just having so much fun in the booth that I was like, hey, why don't you call him a little bitch? Yeah. Why don't you call him a little bitch yeah. boy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we just did one take of it, too, and that's what ended and up that's being. Yeah. Became, like, it was just too was funny, funny to hear that dramatic voice going, you precious little bitch boy. Yeah, like... Yeah. It just, it, you know, sometimes... And, and at the time, like, it wasn't even like, oh, we're going to use this take. It was just I wanted a more playful performance out of the whole take. So I was like, hey, let's start on this very silly moment, and maybe that'll get us into that sort of headspace. Mm-hmm. But just doing it as an exercise, it was so hysterical that, yeah. like, <laughs> it it just it blew the intro that I'd written like completely yeah. out of the water we completely scrapped it and replaced it with this you little bitch boy yeah <laughs> it was great it was so good I hate when I hear myself climb to a note that's my worst moment. <laughs> yeah you gave a note uh, oh. in a in a mix or, or in, yeah in something where you had where... a scoop where you were like I yeah <laughs> I hate when when you can hear me climb <laughs> it's like I'm almost there <laughs> 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 well, I thought it was very beautiful, but I did change it. <laughs> you did change it. Um, this is an interesting, I mean, it's not a music question, but it's, a, it, you know, again, it's a question that I don't know the answer to, so I'm so curious, which mm-hmm. is, like, obviously, 
has been was this thing that came first and you're like, okay, here's this environment in hell and all that. What made you think like, hey, what about making another story in this universe? That's a, that's a fun one. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, the Basically, I was developing where Hasbin would go. And um, I and this this is how Hasbin came about, too, because Hasbin was part of a, a different story at one, one point in my life. And um, I, I get really attached to characters I create because I, I treat every character like they could be the star of their own show. And... Um, and I created these, these, I was developing these imp characters and the, and the boss character. And I was like, you know what? I think these characters don't belong in, in this show. I don't mm. think they belong in this, this story. Um, cause I think they have a story of their own. And through that, through developing Helva and, and meeting Brandon and just, you know, just creating it, it became the other side of this universe that I've kind of created in my head. And so ha- has Helva just literally is just the other side of the coin of this world because it has to do with the actual like the politics of hell mm-hmm. and the you know the goetic demons and mm-hmm. and and I've always wanted to do my own take on some of them so like Stolas is a character that you know exists in the Ars Go- uh, Goetia and like I wanted to explore that I was like I love because if you've ever seen a picture of like what Stolas is depicted as it basically just looks like a Furby with legs <laughs> and I really I was like I love that so I would it always stuck with me and I was like I want to do my own take on this character <laughs> that you know like from this uh yeah this what mythology. if he was horny yeah, what if he was like really <laughs> tall and horny and stuck in like a sad mare like un- right <laughs> make mare. him we got it I know who yeah. we should get for <laughs> that He's sad, he's sad a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but no, it was a, uh, it was really cool to like expand the universe and and um and then this is a musical style. I, I kind of answered this in the live stream, but to separate the shows like spiritually a little bit more as well. Uh, Hell of a is more of a non-diegetic musical. That's yes. correct. Yeah, yeah. I always get it mixed up which ones which, but um where uh, the songs are in coming from the universe. Like I have to kind of find an excuse for there to be a song number in Hell of a Boss where? versus Has Been, which is like a Disney where they just burst yeah. the song. And so, but part of me though, the further we get into the show, the part of me that is starting to not care as much. So yeah. we'll see how much manifesting musical right. stuff happens in Hell of a Boss or, or maybe there's just more drug trips. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like once an it. episode everyone takes shrooms and, uh, and they we see what happens. To sing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Um this is a very easy and fun question to answer about the music. It comes from B heart symbol looks like. Um <laughs> uh it's what kind of genres are you guys interested in experimenting with in the future in and out of the show? Uh, oh, and also, I'm very happy to say that I was able to get signed prints by everyone. Let me yeah, shill yeah. super briefly again. It's streamly.com slash hell of a boss. You can get signed prints from, from any of us. Uh, and uh, uh, Christina and I have a co-signed print for, it's like a tour poster for Verasica. Bryce and I have a co-signed print for You Will Be Okay. Richard and I have a co-signed print for Moxie's Bad Trip. It's like, you know, it's, we're, we're all, it's, it all comes together. Um, <laughs> please check it out um, if you haven't yet. Um, and thank you so much for picking those up. B, um, in terms of genres that uh, have been in the show and that are coming in the show, um, it's almost hard to think of a genre. There are really only kind of two genres that, to my knowledge, have not just been like fully explored in the show or already are songs that are coming in the next season. Mm-hmm. And it's, I can't think of like a full hip hop song mm-hmm. and I cannot think of like a full like techno house dance song. Like that's, those are the two things that I can't really think of, but there's a lot of dance pop. So yeah, Veronica would be that way. Yeah. She would yeah. be the, the, yeah. But I mean, there yeah, is, I mean, yeah, there's so, know, there's so it. much, <laughs> there's, there's I'll do the hip hop. I will sing yeah. the hip hop song. Yes. <laughs> your cat's hair. This is hip hop album. Where is your cat's hair? Um, you know. No, I'm decided I didn't want it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes, not the thing. Yeah, that's not to say that there is that there is no rap because there is a K-pop song that has rap in it. Oh. Um, ton of like arena pop yeah um there are there's like a, some sweet acoustic duets 
There's, There's a, a lot, lot of Broadway of style amazing stuff. Amazing songs in season two. For yeah, sure. yeah, I can't wait for that one episode. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing we recorded with Bryce was we had a very sort of Danny Elfman Broadway track. Mm -hmm. um, that was that that one. You're gonna lose your shit. Um, <laughs> But it's it, there's there's so I mean like it's there's nothing that's off the table and that's one of the things that I love so much creatively about this show is that there's an excuse that there's there oh there's like sexy funk music in <laughs> this one yeah. there's circus music like there's just there can always be an excuse to do a new kind of thing mm -hmm. there is um, there is one track that I would describe as sort of the Moxie's Bad Trip of its season, musically and creatively, that contains, like, Broadway and, like, 80s techno <laughs> and, like, metal and crooner music, like, all in one track, in one yep. sick, twisted gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to hear these. Yeah, I need her. I will say, um, I'd love to know though, like, I mean, just creatively, because what's, what's fun, it, one of the reasons the music is so varied in the show is because, you know, every, every song is kind of based around the character who's singing it, and every character has a very specific sound and a very specific kind of genre that, that's kind of their forte, but like I said earlier, um, you know, Bryce, you got to explore something slightly out of that for Solus, and, and that's what's fun is that uh, there is, like, freedom for the characters to almost, like, kind of expand past their genre so i'd love to know like yeah just from you know like like the the question was is like what kinds of songs and music would you like to explore with these characters because i think it's always fun to kind of know and think about like the possibilities for some of the that's the a characters. great question i'd like to yeah. sing a great viking tune <laughs> you got it all right we're gonna do a viking shanty or a viking shanty yes. Yes. I love sea shanties. I, I, really dope. You you name a sea shanty, we got a sea shanty in the song, in the, in the show. Yeah, sea shanty, uh -huh. definitely. I was just thinking, like, I don't know, when, when you were asking Christina about what artist, you know, would most resemble Verasica, I was thinking, like, oh, who would Stolas's artist be? And I was like, David Bowie? Um, Ooh, yeah. David Bowie, Radiohead, Owl um, City? Talking Heads, you know, any <laughs> band with the word head in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Motorhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not. Uh, so, so I don't know. That's my short answer off the top of my head. But yeah, I love how much how much um, genre exploration you guys use. And, and I have a follow up question, which is do you plan songs in advance or do you let the writing lead you to a moment where you go, oh, I think we need a song here, Sam, what do you think? Or are you saying, Hey, I want to make sure we have two songs next episode. One of them's for so-and-so and one of so-and-so let's write to those songs. Or are you, are you, are you, is, or is the writing leading you to sung moments? Uh, it's kind of a mix. Sometimes it's like I'm very diehard, like, you know, especially when we're approaching an episode or season, I'm like, I, I want this character to have a song. Like, we just, you know, we, we want to explore it, and, and I want them to be able to express. Um, and sometimes it is through the writing. Like, we'll be writing an episode, and we'll be kind of deciding um, what moments feel like they're... Uh, musical. The other challenge, like I said earlier, with ha with a hell of a being um, this non diagenic musical, I do also have to plan story wise. Like you know, what what makes the most sense in this scenario? Because we right. what we do first is that we um, create outlines for the basically the building blocks for the season because the show is becoming very serialized. So it's very it's episodes are are self contained, but they all kind of flow into the overarching narrative. Yeah. So there mm -hmm. is an ongoing story. So because of that, we do try to, you know, kind of building block it out the season before we dive in. And so when we do that, we figure out what the, like, kind of excuse for this music will be in each episode. Yeah. So, like, it's like, oh, this one is very easy. They go to a concert or whatever. Yeah. Or, like, you know, Verasica's at the, she's, she's at a, a beach, so she's doing her performance. Or like um, Verasica is one of my favorite characters too because like in universe you're a pop star so I we just get to yeah, write it's, you it's, like great pop star music it's very easy but like you know and, and with with Stolas it's like 
you know, um, there, there's like a, I can't say too much about season two yet, but like, you know, season each one, two. <laughs> <laughs> each one is like, it, it, like Stolas is the most, I think, classic musical theater in the sense that he is so emotional and he is kind of a character that, that can sing. So it's like, he can just kind of go into songs cause he's very dramatic. So like there's moments where like we can kind of manifest a song just because he's feeling a lot. So he's going to express it. Um, you know, but he's actually kind of singing out into the universe. So, yeah, you yeah. Know, so we have to kind of uh, address that as well. But yeah, we usually find it through when we're breaking those those building blocks and then finding what's the realistic reason we can bring a song into this. And some of them are easy, and some of them are more. We have to be creative. Like they're they're on drugs, or like they're this or that. But um, uh, it's really fun to find that. And then sometimes I'm just like, I want this character to sing. So in one of these episodes, we got to find out how we can get that character yes. to sing. Yeah. Um, there, there's a really terrific question uh, here asking this. I mean, I, isn't that great? Oh, what song would Blitz sing in the shower? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what, what song would Blitz sing in the shower? Let me tell I, you what I picture. Yes. I, I picture him sudsing himself up going, uh, 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 it's Britney, bitch. <laughs> That's yeah. mentally for yeah. me, like, I can, yeah. I can picture that very easily. Yeah. 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 That's, that's very, very, very in character. Another, I mean, I know Blitz, I kind of base Blitz around rock. So if there's like a, like a fun rock song. I'm not as big on rock myself, funny enough. So I, that's why I'm like, is there a song? That's that makes it. <laughs> huh. Well, he is singing that song in the in the van. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mustang Dog. The Mustang Dog song. Yeah. Let's, let's go with that for now. Yeah. <laughs> that's a song you can Yeah, something knows. that involves hip thrusting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's my cherry pie. Yeah, yes. That yeah. one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, what, do you, what do you think Blitz would sing in the shower? What does Moxie sing in the shower? It would have to be Hamilton for sure. Yeah, but as a bastard orphan <laughs> or and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot. By Providence and Barbers. To anyone, anyone who knows, like, or, or I don't, I feel like every cast member has seen you go into Hamilton at some point, but like at least between sessions. Yeah. I don't know if Bryce ever like, saw me go into Hamilton. Did you, Bryce? That's not ever true. Seen? It's been on every uh, stream, and yeah. I'm glad you break your streak. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't think there's a single Dear cast member. Do you the What to say to you? Okay. And, and really, uh, Richard is pigeonholing himself. I've seen him sing all manner of stuff during sex. <laughs> Uh, there was like a couple weeks where it was nothing but suddenly Seymour. Suddenly Seymour. <laughs> Nobody ever treated me kindly. Daddy left early. Mama was poor. I'd meet a man and I'd follow him blindly. He'd snap his fingers and me, I'd say, sure. Suddenly Seymour. <laughs> Play, I want to play that role. I don't even want to play. I don't yeah. want to play Seymour. <laughs> Moxie would make a great Audrey in yeah. the shop. I want to be Audrey. <laughs> Actually, why don't we why don't we go around with that? What is Verasica's shower song? <laughs> Verasica's shower song. Come back to me. Come back to me. Dang it! I was <laughs> Show us. Me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I can go through other characters. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Let, give us a minute. What is, what is Moxie's Luna's shower song? Moxie's, Moxie's is, is, is Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. That's my, yeah. yeah. What What is uh, Luna's? Oh, man. Oh, God. She's so... That's another... Okay. Is, maybe punk. she's singing a Morrissey Correct. song. I'm, I'm in a... Is, is Green Day punk? Early Green Day. Yeah, yeah. 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 Early, early Green Day. Early Green Day. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Full Someone. Of Full of Art of Broken Dreams. There we go. Oh, <laughs> that's that's nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, people are suggesting that um, it's uh, Slave for You by Britney Spears oh, uh, for Verasica. That's a good one. I'm thinking it needs to be like more women scorned. We need like some <laughs> Harry Underwood. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Before he cheats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before he cheats, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or burn from Hamilton, Richard. Oh, 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 oh that's 
a good one. I, I can't even do you burn. He's gonna, he's gonna get started. I'm throwing these letters away. <laughs> I'm burning them up today. That's the only lyrics yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly how it goes. Yeah. It goes, yeah. What, do, what do we think? Stolas? Shower song? I mean, I, obviously, it's a pure hypothetical because Stolas takes long, luxurious baths. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. The bath song. <laughs> I'm caught between like a, a sort of more earlier um, like crooner song, like a, you know, fly me to the moon, you know, something like that. Well, or, that's sweet. At yes. Rubber Ducky. <laughs> or Rubber Ducky, yeah. Just because he's, yeah. he's in the bath by himself. But then, um, I don't know, there's got to be some like... Uh, I, I want to hear from the fans. Like, what what did yeah. they want to hear Stola sing? There was a while yes. where I did some, like, uh, as part of one of these signings, I did sort of like Stola's karaoke. You know, I said, you can order a song, oh, and record a couple of songs. And I'm trying to remember some of the ones I did because they were great, great. Our fans have great ideas, you know. So when um, Stola sing Shaggy, it wasn't me. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> wasn't me. That's great. Um, people, uh, a couple, we have... Uh, Leo Lokison says, loving everything Asmodeus and curious if we'll get more music from him or from the Lust Ring in general. Yes. Very much yes. Very much Very yes. yes. A lot of uh, Plenty. Um, and someone also asked uh, if there would be uh, any duetting between Blitz and Stolas, to which I say... Perhaps. Mayhaps. Mayhaps. So... <laughs> Just, you know, uh, keep an ear out, perhaps. Um, will there be Hell of a Boss sheet music? Ooh, uh, that's, that's a very a good question. We've got a lot of sheet music uh, for these terrific performers because uh, often we are asked for it. Um, so, you know, it exists. Uh, so it is, it's certainly, I, I feel like it's certainly plausible that it gets released. Ooh. Yes. Um, oh, this is also very interesting. Every canon relationships couple song. That's a good. I just saw that one, and I'm like, man. That is of from Kim Lechman. Today, I would be very like dead on songs, like mm. titles, because um, there there's some good. Like I, there's so many complicated relationships in the show. Yeah. So I'm like. Okay, Stolitz holding out for a hero. Yes, um, that's a good one. Uh, good one. Uh, what is what is Moxie and Millie's couple name? Uh, Eminem. 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 I love that. <laughs> Eminem. Um, Eight Mile. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is Crazy in Love? Mm, Crazy in Love's pretty good. Maybe I. I love. I would do anything for you. Yes. For my meat love. Ooh. And I, I would, would do, do anything for love, but I won't do that. I gotta write you a meat love style. Song. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. It. I'm I filing that away in the bag. Someone when said, I remember every so little then, thing. The Stol shower, the shower song. Someone says the bird is the word for Stolas. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a funny answer. Bird, 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 bird is the yeah. word. Bird, bird, bird. Yeah, Stolitz could also be bad romance, or maybe that is oh. maybe that is that, and that like, is bad romance. Yeah, yeah. That kind of applies to all the Blitz relationships. Yeah, relationships. <laughs> they are all bad romances. Yeah. We got five okay. minutes. We got five minutes, everyone. What about a concert? We are talking Ooh, about it. We are talking we about it. We would love to do that. Yeah. So I've I have actually even reached out to a venue in LA, um, and then in theory that goes well, and then we start doing one in New York, and then perhaps at your local Comic Con viewer. Um, you know, like that's that's also a possibility. And Bryce can stay with us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So Bryce we'll keep Bryce in a little box. Yes. And we'll have a little time to see very easily. I to say bird is the word. <laughs> bird, bird, there you go. Bird, 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 you go. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that would be wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which characters would enjoy Queen and what song would they sing? From Sloop Frick. What a name. Interesting. I feel like all the characters would like Queen. Yeah. Oh my god. A good the, the number yeah. one for song the for all of them would be Another One Bites the Dust. <laughs> oh, there that's it is so right good. there. The IMP theme. That's the IMP one. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, 
Uh, let me a see final. a couple other. Yeah, let's see if there's another couple f uh, last questions. Um, will there ever be a segment in either uh, Has Been Hotel or Hell of a where it's just a character going crazy on piano or guitar? There is, in fact, uh, uh, on the other show, there is uh, there is a piano solo yeah. moment uh, that does occur. Yes. Um, oh, oh, this is a great question because we know the answer and it's very funny and we didn't have Bryce before when we talked about this. Um, someone named Lyra Len says, Bryce, during Stolas's rants, the sexual uh -huh. rants, were you actually spewing nasty stuff or did you record just gibberish in between the lines? I happen to know the answer because these two told me that you were recording absolute filth, weren't you? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> just pure yeah. spice. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was one of the first things we did, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, Richard was and like, I, just make something up. And this was like beginning of pandemic, you know, so I hadn't done anything in a while. And I was just, I just remember being like, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, we, and we were just talking about that, Bryce, because we were, we were talking about how the show, you know, explores some very adult themes and, and a lot of adult language. And yeah. it was our first session with you. And so I think I was very, like, very cautious about how I approached you about it. I said, so we have this scene where you have to, like, talk, like, sexual things. Yeah. And you can say whatever you want. Don't worry. Don't feel like, okay. And then you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> <laughs> We were like, uh, okay. <laughs> Just blew, yeah. blew the hair back it on was, Richard's it was head. Very yeah. It was so, it was such a like welcome surprise. I was, it was I think so it, fun. It informed me and Richard that like it's like you were you were game for anything. You were game. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna throw yeah. at you. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, because yeah, great. like I think um, initially like the the what, what I what I did with it and what I do with it when when Solus goes off like that is that it it becomes a, a bunch of sensor bleeps. So you know it it, it was like. A situation where it didn't um, like you could have said anything, and I would have found places yeah, to make it sound dirty. Yeah, but you. But the actual like things you were saying made it were so actually, easy. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was very fun to to to. Oh, please, out. please oh, never please. ever release it ever. <laughs> Except for peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, to to segue into to Christina also like I know that you do a lot of like younger audience projects so i know like this character is just so much more raunchy yeah. than a lot of things you do i think i've mentioned it before but it brings me great joy when you search my name it's like christina v disney christina v vacay to bone town <laughs> like i have yeah. brain <laughs> vacay yeah. to bone town you're, you're, taking, a you're taking a vacay from disney to bone town <laughs> Um, uh, there were a lot of questions about two characters in particular as well that I'm seeing people like be like, ah, I gotta get this in before the timer. Okay. Um, one of them is Luna. People are asking, are we going to see more Luna centric episodes? I know that the answer is extremely yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other one was Fizz and people were asking, is there going to be more Fizz music? And is there going to be more Fizz with Ozzy? The answer yes. to both is like big yes. Massive yes. Big, so yeah. much yes. So don't worry. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> There's a whole lot more, whole lot more fizz. A lot more, a lot of fizz in season two. A lot of, a lot of stolas in season. I mean, a lot of and a lot of Luna. But um, we but go, yeah, we go deep, deep in season two. Season two is good. We, everyone gets really, gets good storylines in yeah. season two. And we're and and I guess just because you know it, it happened in the last, uh, last stream, and I'll I'll say it in this one. I know it's been a very long time since we've gotten an episode out. Um, we we are painfully aware. <laughs> um, we are working incredibly hard. The studio is is seriously killing it. Um, it's just that the the episode that we're making is a, a really ambitious, and there's also kind of a legal element that you know we just has taken a long time to, to kind of sort out. Um, but it's very close, and it's um, I've seen it. It's unbelievable. It, it's definitely it's like, really good. It's, it's going to be worth the wait. Um, and then we also have made a lot of progress already on season two as well. So the next season two shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert <laughs> shouldn't take too much long after uh, after one oh eight. And um, and also they are longer, so they'll also be mm -hmm. very worth a, a solid wait because they're much more content. At least I one of say. these episodes is like a full half hour. Yes, one of them is a full half hour. Yeah. <laughs> um, so are we? We're we're done. Okay. So um, 
we, as we did in the last stream, we are all going to be doing our live streams. Uh, keep keep an eye on uh, my Instagram, which is where I'll be doing my live stream. I haven't picked the date yet, but it'll be very soon. Instagram Live is where I'll be signing. Sam, where will you yes, be signing? Yes, I will be. I will be live on TikTok when I sign. Um, look out for when Richard is signing because we will we'll sign together. together. We have a duo print. Mm -hmm. um, Christina and I obviously also have a duo print. So, uh, you know, I, I will, I'll, yeah. I'll be loosey goosey about it. You tell me when you want to sign it and then we'll. And then, we'll Christina, it out. where you'll probably announce on your social media when you'll be uh, signing? Uh, what next you Saturday. Although my, my timing was bad because I forgot I'm getting my wisdom teeth out on Friday. So we'll see. Oh, okay. No, no, that's going to be great. You're going to be super high. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> super high. So next Saturday is, at noon, and we'll see We'll see how I feel. I'm hoping I just want to sign with you while your face is like this, and you're on yes. super experience. And I have been, like, and, drooling the whole time. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for this order. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm... And Bryce? Yeah, same. I'm going to be signing on Instagram um, at the Bryce Capades, and uh, I haven't decided yet, but probably next weekend as well. Um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, I think we're going to leave our, our stores open. Yes. For about two weeks. I know a lot of people have asked uh, on our Instagrams um, if they don't, if you don't get a, if you don't have a chance to get a print this week, we will be keeping our stores open for the next two weeks. Um, and uh, there you can find our prints uh, at streamly.com. And if you want to go to our in individual pages, it's just streamly.com forward slash our names, Richard Horvitz, etc. There's the artist Q&A next weekend. And oh, and there's the artist Q&A next weekend. Oh, there's the artist oh, Q&A oh, next oh, weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's an artist Q&A next nice. weekend. So, um, again, we would like to thank all of you for your support uh, yes. uh, in this sh uh, show and uh, how much you have taken to it. And uh, we appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thank, thank you, Richard. Vivian. Thank you, Vivian. Um, and, you know, we tried to answer as many of the questions as we could. If you have anything else, particularly anything else for the music, seriously, feel free to tweet me at Sam Haft. Very simple on Twitter. Um, I will answer as much as I can. I will try to answer stuff when I'm doing the live stream. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it's just whatever questions we see. And we have such a limited time of doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank we'll you. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Q&A. Bye.